July fever. <laughs> That's what it's called. It's called July fever. I was at the barber the other day, and don't laugh, I did go to the barber. <laughs> I need to go and have a shave up. And he said to me, he said, uh, you must be getting excited. And I thought, well, what's he talking about, you know? He said, this is July fever. I said, oh yes, because of course, we do get, get excited, but there's race meetings before that we've got to work at and, and, and be prepared for. So it does hit the world, really. You get people coming in from all over the world, flying in with helicopters, and it's just, as Chris says, all walks of life. It gives me great pleasure to sit in the um, chairman's box at Hollywood Bets Gravel with two colleagues uh, of the racing industry. Uh, Andrew Harrison, believe it or not, is actually at Hollywood Bets Gravel, but we can't wait any longer. It's probably the busiest time of our career this week in the lead up to the Hollywood Bets Durban July. So Andrew is here, he's in a meeting, we can't wait any longer. He, he's not in the game reserve, he is here, he's doing some work for a change. So we'll let him off. But I am joined in the studio today by uh, two guests. The one uh, gentleman's name is, is, is Chris Haber, and, and he is instrumental in the running and in the preparation of the Hollywood Bets Derby in July. So we're going to find out a bit from him what makes him tick and, and things in the lead up to the, to the big day. And the other guest is uh, a good friend and colleague. They're both good friends and colleagues. Uh, Kurt uh, Grunewald, who is uh, the track manager. <laughs> And there's so many people that go behind the scenes that we don't know, we don't see, and the unsung heroes. And the track manager is quite important. Gentlemen, how are you both? Great. Good to see you. Busy week. Yeah. Good, there. Good, right. Kurt. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. I'll start uh, with you, Kurt, if you don't mind. Uh, Gold Circle, many years experience, many years service. How yeah. many years? Uh, last year was my 30th year. Sure. Okay. Yeah, so you've got time. your 30 years uh, award. award. And all, okay. Kurt, 30 yeah. years. Yeah. Kurt, once you start with a company, uh, the company's good to you, you're good to the company, it's all about loyalty. 100% Warren, yeah. yeah you, you don't hang around if you're not happy. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, tracks, uh, has it always been your, what is the official word? Is it a, a, a landscaper, a horticulturist, or agriculture? What is the actual term for a track manager for? No, it's a track manager. Track. Basically, it is uh, a horticulturist in sense, but we don't do the flowers. Okay. Uh, we just concentrate on grass. So. Okay. So yeah. probably, possibly called a grass specialist. Grass specialist, yeah. okay. Well, good. We're going to come back and talk a bit more about that. And, uh, you know, we move our attention now on to Chris. And Chris, what is the, <coughs> let's start from the beginning. What is the name of your company and what do you do? Well, what, is, what do you do? So my agency uh, is, is World Sport. Uh, it's World Sport Arabia. We're based uh, primarily in uh, the UAE now. Uh, we operated also in South Africa for many years from the late 90s. Um, and um, and and uh, now I focus only in South Africa on the Hollywood Bets Durban July because uh, I've been involved since two, the year 2000. Um, so our focus is, is basically uh, we're commercial promoters of events. Uh, we work with event owners like Gold Circle to really package and unlock all of the commercial value around events like the Hollywood Bets Durban July and that includes Things like broadcasting, digital media, uh, the actual branding and and uh, and and uh, packaging of the event itself. Uh, that includes content creation, putting together all of the race day and build up content. Anything that we can help uh, other brands and and partners get involved with uh, and invest in, uh, on top of the core investment that obviously Gold Circle makes in the racing product, yes. uh, we step in and, and work with Gold Circle over a long term strategy. Uh, to really um, to build that program, particularly around a specific event, in this case with the Hollywood Bets Durban July. I mean, we're involved, I'm involved in horse racing, but also triathlon, cycling, uh, uh, sailing, we've done golf, cricket. So we're not, we, 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 we're not sports specialists. Right. We are everything, we call it outside the, the rails. So we're everything wrapped around the core sporting uh, property. Um, and we work with uh, event owners like um, Gold Circle to bring in partners like Hollywood Bets and broadcast partners and, and the whole range of people that we have involved to get involved with the product. Sure, that, that's interesting. And, and obviously your association is with Gold Circle, as you've alluded to. Yeah. It's been a, a, a many years a relationship. Yeah, well, this is my 24th 
uh, Durban, July. Sure. Well, and so I was a very young man when I got. So, so you would have come across Chris. I mean, in your time as well, uh, twenty-four years, thirty years. Yeah, <clears throat> I was originally based at uh, Sommerfeld, okay. um, and then from Sommerfeld I moved. To, there I was assistant uh, to the estate manager, concentrating on the on the training tracks and grounds. Mm -hmm. Then I moved across to the commercial department for a, a couple of years, and then in two thousand eight I came back to to the racing side of the business okay. when I joined the Gravel team. Okay. And obviously, I've uh, not known Chris, but uh, for, since 2008, been on, on site, okay. I've seen him at this okay. time of the year. So he's a, he's, a, he's a known figure. <laughs> he's a known figure. And every time I look out my window in the office, you're darting here, charging you're darting around. there, charging there. That's what it's yeah. all about. But yeah. there we go, 24 years service to, to this event and, and 30 years service to this company. I'm a puppy. I've only had 10 years service, but uh, we're still working on it. Okay. Uh, where are you based? Uh, well, now, nowadays I'm based in the UAE, in, in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Uh, I moved up there about 10 years ago. Before that, I was based in Cape Town for uh, about 15 years, which is when I began the association. We st I started out, I got into the relationship with Gold Circle for the July because we were for many years the promoters of the J&B Met down in Cape Town okay. uh, in the late 90s and into the 2000s with Brandhaus and, and, and the Kenilworth team. Rothmans had to pull out because of legislation in yes. 2000. And they called us up in Cape Town and said, hey, you're doing a great job there. We're going to need a new partner. What do you recommend? Um, and it's interesting because the first year, which was 2000, we actually said to them, look, there's a lot of proposals flying around. There's a lot of brokers at the door, wolves at the door saying they'll take over from Rothmans. We said, take a year. Don't have any sponsor. Take back all of the rights, broadcast, branding, uh, uh, fashion, We'll repackage it with you and we'll retake it to market the next year, which is what we did. And we brought, I brought Vodacom in in 2001 and then that kept me going. Um, when I moved to the UAE, I kept doing it remotely. And then in 2016, we, uh, we, we divested from the South African business. But in the, in the divorce, uh, personally, you know, the relationship by then was so strong and my personal equity and passion for the July was so strong that I kept it going. So I managed remotely. Okay. Long answer to your question from, from Dubai, but from January onwards, I'm here uh, every six weeks or so. And then certainly in the build up to June, I'm here most of the time. And a lot of people at Grayville say, oh, we know it's time that uh, the July's here because we see you running around the ramp and the track and all that. And so, uh, yeah, I love it and, uh, and, and, and love to make time to come back and, and work on the event every year. That's interesting. And, and your know, technology nowadays that, you know, you can work remotely and you can sort of you know, get get your your hands involved uh, and 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 you know from from so far away, and you must thoroughly enjoy the South African winters, especially the case. Oh, it's beautiful. Can't call it winter. <laughs> Correct. It's it's perfect weather. It's perfect time to come. Things have wrapped up there. It's forty two degrees in Dubai this week, so uh, I'm I'm very happy to be down here. Talking about winter, the track. Uh, Yes, it is fresh. You know, temperatures play an important role, but Definitely. this time of the year, especially Hollywood Bed, Scottsville, both tracks look in pristine condition. Nice, rich green color. Yeah. How do you do it? <laughs> Warren, uh, to be honest, obviously lots of hard work, um, chemical applications, when I say chemicals, your fertilizers and, and nutrients. Um, but we have been blessed with warm weather. Um, and that's especially evident at Scottsville, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. normally falls in the, in the uh, frost belt. Yeah. Um, we only had our first frost uh, the Monday and Tuesday after Comrades Marathon. Okay. And that's the only frost we've had so far this sure. whole season. So we got, I mean, if you looked at, at the temperatures leading up to the Golden North Sprint, I mean, we were in the mid-20s to high 20s. Yeah, so and that's so. ideal to keep the grass growing. And yes. even at this time of the year, when it yes. should be starting to go dormant. You've got to feel for the guys, you know, in the other provinces that, that suffer from harsh winters. Yeah. You know, when you look at it on TV, the grass is brown. Mm. Uh, the trees yeah. are brown. It's the all gallops brown. yesterday from the yeah from from from, from yeah, yeah. was just crazy. Uh, maintenance then is obviously different, or, or is it not? I mean, is it just the colour that's different? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, the plant's dormant, so it's not. You've got no growth. You don't have to cut. Uh, okay. You still got to do your divot repairs and, and and take care of the underfoot conditions. Yes. So you'll be irrigating, but again, because of the cold temperatures overnight, mm. you'll have to limit your, your irrigation through okay. during the day. We we don't have those temperature issues. Yes. So we are fortunate to irrigate in the darkness sure. of okay. of night. Um, so you know it doesn't impact on the on your day day operations. So there is a big difference. Uh, maintenance per se is a lot less in winter, even even with us, because your grass cutting is, is a lot less. Sure. Prime summer, 
we cut in the track three times a week. Sure. Obviously, your small machines, brush cutters, doing the edges, small mows where the big mows can't get. Uh, but winter now, we, we sort of trim, just keep it neat and tidy once a week. Sure. Okay. Um, that's, that's, so, that's yeah, big, big drop off in terms of hands on maintenance, maintenance. Yeah, yeah. On, the tur- on the turf itself. Chris, uh, staff wise, are you a one man show? Or is it no, no, no. I, 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 we have a team. I personally have a team now of about five people. Uh, I've got a social media manager specific for the for the HDJ. I've got a uh, activations manager who handles all of the infield activations and, and and brand rollouts there. I've got a client service manager who handles all the rights delivery for the for the uh, for them. We've got uh, we've got a fashion events coordinator and a stage coordinator. So um, that's built up over time, um, but uh, we've got a nice team specific for the HDJ that. Uh, that that work directly with me and then we plug into the gold circle team and and the broader agency team uh and the hollywood team so um you know it's those sort of four or five core assistants that i have and then we plug into the massive team that as you know uh really rolls out the day your your main concerns you know it's stressful for everybody and and that's why i say there's so many people involved from the highest you know, hierarchy down to the team that uh, you know, run the, 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 the race meeting and, and, and the track and the stompers. Is that what they're called, the stompers? <laughs> divot repairers. Divot repairers, the divot repairers <laughs> that, uh, you know, everyone is just so equally important. But in the lead up and, you know, what are your main concerns for the day? What do you worry about the most? I mean, it's a bit of a rolling mall, to be honest with you, because, you know, depending on how far out we are, my concern set shifts from... Yeah things that that need to be sorted out on a, on a process by process basis if you're if you're thinking you know if you're thinking well out uh, you know have we got enough partners are the partners happy are they coming back uh, you know as we get closer are people dropping out are people coming in and, and maintaining that entire uh, that entire sort of ecosystem rolling forward as we get close to what you know most people are interested in is I think uh, as, as, as race week approaches have we got all the right people in place yeah. To manage this thing, um, you know, have I got? Are my are my people briefed? Have are the briefs all clear? Are there any uh, hidden demons out there? I mean, there's there's a it's a big brief as I outlined there. I mean, you're talking. I, I oversee the setup of the stage and the running order and 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 PA content and all that. I plug into the Supersport broadcast, make sure that's all happening. Branding setups, uh, uh, sponsor uh, hospitality, working with Steve Marshall on on all that stuff. So. I think it's just making sure that there's no major hidden gaps that are going to jump up with no time left to solve them is, is a big worry every year around this time. Race day, I mean, it's, it's all about delivery. So I'm worried about the customer experience. I don't want breakdowns in, in, uh, in, in, in AV breakdowns or the power outages, you know, anything that's going to bring the, the, cause a major disruption uh, to the overall race day experience beyond the racing. I mean, the racing could all happen, but meanwhile, we've got a major yeah. Yeah. breakdown out there. You guys are all cool, great race day. And meanwhile, we've had a massive issue. I think we've moved beyond, we, it's, a, it's a pretty well-oiled machine now. And, and uh, you know, back in the day, we used to have security concerns and stuff yeah. like that. That's always an issue. But I think it's mostly just hoping that we've put all the right things in place for the for the punters and the crowds that come out here, a lot of them only once a year yeah. to make sure that they have an unforgettable experience and that we're growing it uh, year on year. So, As we talk more and more about it, it's just such a massive event and it's just so, it is a, there's just something about it, Kurt, you know, yeah. there's that vibe. It's uh, us as staff members and as part of the team that are involved on the day. Yes, it's stressful, but there's just that butterfly. You just, yeah. it's, it's a vibe about it. It's a special day. You know, you 100% uh, right. And the first time you, you we noticed, well, I noticed it was the years we we raced through COVID. Mm. Yes. And you got here, and there, it, it was sadly no disrespect to to the horses and the the people yeah. involved yeah. on the day. It was felt like just another midweek Correct. or another weekend out of season right. race meeting because yeah. there was no atmosphere. Yeah, was and that's what makes the, the difference is yeah. the atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Even for us that work here and are involved, they're directly involved, it's still yeah. the atmosphere yeah. gets to you. Yeah, you know, it, it does yeah. pump up the adrenaline. If you haven't experienced the, the Hollywood Beach Derby in July, there's still time for to get tickets. There's still time. If you can't get to it this year, please God, that's next year and the year after because it's, it's something unbelievable. But 
how would you describe yourself temperament-wise, uh, and, and how do you handle stress? I, I do. Yeah. I mean, we all human beings. We all get cross. We mm. all can lose our temper. We are all human beings. But some people don't. How do you mm. handle it? Well, I mean, I think specifically uh, to the July, it, it, it's uh, over a long period of time. You have to figure out which are the battles to fight, and which are the which, which where where can we find solutions that everybody can live with. Um, and I think over time you, you, you do that so that, you know, it, it can be overwhelming. And I see that with new staff coming in, it's like so much, they don't actually know what to worry about. Yeah. So, you know, knowing that is a, is a key component of it. That's number one. Number two is I am a people's guy. I'm not, we were chatting earlier. I'm not a life of the party guy, but I like people, everybody involved with the event. And I love coming here. So it doesn't matter who it is that we're working together on this thing. We're all working together on it. And there's no, you know, I, even though I control a big chunk of it, I don't, there's no territorial, in my view, uh, issues in terms, of, in, in terms of who controls what or what, it, you know, what, what you've got to do. So I, I try and maintain that focus. Um, I think the third thing is just, I just, even after 24 years, I try and maintain, or I always inevitably have a sense of awe, joy, pride in the actual event in the product. And I get up, I'm excited about race day, I'm excited about race week. I come down, I have a few of my own little rituals, I'm sure we all do when they <laughs> arrive at Grayville early that morning. You do a couple of things you've always done and you, you try and hit some certain high points um, throughout the day that, that keep it going. And, and that I think helps maintain yeah. perspective and, and keep it going. And I, I think, and, and that's that following on from that is, it sounds corny, but it's a bit of a, I feel a certain responsibility, you know? I mean, I'm not a racing guy, as you know. I'm not, a, I'm not part of the horse racing industry. I'm not a Durbanite. I'm not, you know, my grandparents didn't grow up watching this race. I came into it, but I've stayed with it for a long time. And I, and I, I work a lot, as you know, with the city of Durban and on their strategies and province. I'm very involved in all those kind of stakeholders. So I take a lot of, um, I, I place a lot of emphasis on how big this is for everybody. And I try and just maintain, if I do get short-tempered or, or frustrated or focused, I try and reorient myself to that. Yeah. And, and, and that inevitably helps me find a balance that I can re-enter a discussion or a yeah. meeting or whatever in a way that helps us uh, keep, going, yeah, keep going forward. That's, that's, that's a good way to do it, a good perspective and a good attitude, absolutely. The preparation of the track, both tracks, because we obviously yeah. on poly and, and grass, do you do anything differently in the for the big day? No. <laughs> now, now that is uh, I knew the answer to that, but the, the viewers might not have. And I, I want you to elaborate a bit more and explain why is that? Okay. Apart from changing seasons, um, where in summer we have no control over nature and, and rainfall, in winter we control for most of the time anyway. Uh, what amount of moisture that goes into the track? So that's, a, that's easier to do. So that's one thing. Obviously maintenance slows down in terms of cutting and, and mowing as we mentioned earlier. But at the end of the day, our priority in producing a racing surface is that it's safe for both the horse and the rider. And that's every race meeting we hold. So it makes no, yes, the, 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 the eyes of the nation and, and most likely the world are on on gravel on the 6th of July for the Hollywood Bets Durban July. But our hours are on that surface for every other race, okay. race day that we have. Great point, yeah. Um, it, we can't prepare it any differently. The horses don't know they are special. They are an animal and, and, and also the jockey. We've got to make sure they all, both the rider and, and the animal yeah. are safe and we can, that we produce the best all year possible round. surface all year, round. Every, all year round for every every meeting that yeah, we that's, have. Sure, that's so interesting. I mean, that's yeah. uh, Chris. I mean, yeah. As you, as you think of, you know, what could you, as you say, what could you do differently? You can't make the grass grow faster. You can't make <laughs> it paint it bright green. Or yeah. you know, you, you you've got it. And that is so interesting. Yeah. And I'm glad you touched on that. So yeah. the safety of the horse, the safety of the rider, it has to be whether it's the Hollywood Bets Durban July or it's a merit rate at 64 on a, on a Wednesday afternoon. 100%. That's that's interesting. That that yeah. is interesting. One thing I have noticed. And I feel proud about it when I watch the races, uh, which I do every day around the country and around the world, in actual fact. Um, I look down at the start and I see you or Kevin, your assistant or colleague, and I, I feel proud because you're there 
it is a track manager at the start every single race. Mm. Why is that? Well, it's, it's a good point uh, to interact with, with the other officials, the starters, the vets, and also the jockeys. If they've got any comments, you know, we're out there, we can interact. Uh, normally, it's very jovial and, and friendly. There's never any altercations of any sort, so it's always a, a, a good spot. Um, and also, you know, the horses get there before the race. If something possibly goes wrong at the start, we are there to see what needs to be done straight away. Okay. You know, it's... it's could take us five minutes to get there, especially on, on a Hollywood Bets uh, Durban July Day because it's so busy. Um, so when we're out there, we can make a call, see what maintenance needs to be done or repairs need to be done to get the, 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 that race on the go. Um, and also from there, we can follow the race and we're right sort of behind should there be, be any un unfortunate incidents during the running of the race with, okay. with, the, with the horse. Okay. Um, and then again, take the appropriate action to get that, that situation taken care of from our side. So, so you, you, there are other, yes, the track is your main focus, but yeah. there are other areas of responsibility, whereas, as you say, if there is an unfortunate incident, you know, the transport yeah. of the, yeah. the float, uh, the animal to the, wherever, you know, yeah. to, the, to the storage area, all that, the what, rail yes. bursts, the rail breaks or something yep, which can happen, yeah. that, you've got to have the team on standby, sure. boom, to fix it yeah. as soon as so possible. So we make that call. We'll, sometimes, obviously, in windy conditions, fortunately, we don't generally have that in, in, uh, on Durban July Day. But in some meetings we've had where the guys have been hanging on rails because the, the southerly wind's been so, so, so strong. strong yeah. um, but again, or in between the, uh, when the horses are at the start and the, the rail might get pushed over, we get a call because we we're at the start. We won't be able to see maybe it's a 600 start. We won't see the rail at the 800. So we get a call from the boardroom saying, get the guys out there, take care of the situation and get on with the race. Yeah. Yeah. You always judge a manager by you know, A, how they treat their staff and, and, and how prepared they are to be hands-on. And often, often, uh, I see yourself and Kevin uh, and your assistants driving the tractors yourself, cutting the grass yourself. It's important. It is, Warren. And, 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 and the reason being is, uh, and I'll refer to an incident we had about a year or two ago, where it was a poly race meeting and I was on duty and one of our drivers didn't arrive. For the, the, to, to, the one of the Harrow, drivers at Harrow the track, eventually made a few phone calls. Found out the poor, poor gentleman got run over the night before and didn't survive. Oh, shame. So on that point of the day, I've got no other drivers. We're quite a small team. Everyone's got a specific task on the race day, and we don't have extras sort of hanging around looking for something to do. So we needed three tractors to Harrow. So I climbed on the tractor and Harrowed the track. Yeah. And that's what we need to do as managers. We need to be hands on. So if even if that could happen during the day, somebody falls down, they get injured on duty sure. for uh, some unforeseen incident. You know, the show's got to go on. Sure, sure. sure. And I or Kevin, whoever is the, the senior person on duty at the time, needs to be able to get in there and get their hands dirty and, and get the show going. Yeah, that's and been, keep it going. Yeah, that's, uh, and keep it going, you're quite right. But yeah. uh, that I've been witness to that many a time. Now, Chris, two people that... Um, well, one gentleman is now, I think, having his first Hollywood Bets Durban July as a guest and as a, as, as a retired gentleman. The other lady is still uh, actively involved on a part-time basis. But two people that I'm sure you've worked with for a long time, and I'm talking about Ken Twiddell, um, Mr. July, and, and just a, a wonderful human being, and Monica, Monica Holman, who's also a wonderful human being and been part of the team for many years and mm. how's your relationship with them? Well Ken and I were very close, have always been very close over the years. I mean the first year that I got involved, uh, Ken was my my direct uh, report. Uh, there was another Ken who was the CEO at that point uh, before yeah. Michelle uh, and, uh, and, and, and Gold Circle was a very different place um, and Ken and I worked on every July together up until up until this one. Um, and, and it grew in scale. I mean, you got to remember yeah. as well, the first year I mentioned back then, you know, we, that year we didn't even have a title sponsor. We had a little bit of contribution from City of Durban and we had uh, a couple of bub from Schweppes and that was it. Schweppes has been with us the whole time. But we built a program uh, over uh, 20 some years where we brought in, I mean, now we've got something like 18 different sponsors, a new headline sponsor, massive uh, media outputs and everything. And Ken and I, basically walked that journey together him here obviously based at Grayville and me coming in and out 
um, and new faces come, came and went and, and, uh, and, and different focuses. I mean, you got to remember back in those days as well, no social media. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> broadcast on B to Chem SP tapes. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we, were, we were doing it in analog days. You know, the, no, I mean, we had cell phones, but it wasn't the way it is today, yeah. you yeah. know. Um, so a lot of old school... Uh, management together with with Ken shoulder to shoulder you know doing layouts for independent newspaper and and all those kinds of things and really the interesting thing about the July itself is the transition over those 24 years yeah. the transformation um, both demographically by the way I mean we won't get into that but if you look at the crowds in 2000 and the crowds today total shift yeah. in audiences complete um, total shift in in media which was Ken's, as you know, Ken's focus is marketing and media, yes. how the race is communicated, all the, how it's produced, all that has shifted dramatically. Um, you know, and Ken w was there to see that through and manage that. It seems like obvious, but it's not. You know, if every year you have to change the focus of how this race is promoted and communicated. You have to absorb new sponsors and retain the attention to detail that Ken is famous for. I mean, yeah, Ken, yeah. right down to... Copy checking yeah. every flyer, <laughs> looking at every logo, and I was there, sort of as a younger man, wild card. Ah, oh, Ken, let's do this. Oh, this guy's coming in. Just do this. Throw this on there, and Ken absorbing all that <laughs> as a friend and a colleague uh, was was an amazing partnership to be to be in partnership with him to see that through because executives come and go, and 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 different focuses and the pressure on financials and all that, but. But just working with Ken every year on this particular, and he obviously had a bigger brief with the rest of the racing calendar and everything. And I think between us, we really had a strong friendship and a bond uh, that grew up over the, those years, talking about personal lives. And, you know, you go through a lot in two decades. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, um, Ken, Ken was, uh, and, and also for me, not living here, you know, a real... Uh, a real supporter for me, you know, like yes. really making sure that as I yeah. came in and out that... <laughs> People understood what I was trying to get done and, and what my role was, and and so I just you know one of in my career one of the closest sure. colleagues I've had and and uh, and really uh, loved his passion for the race and his enthusiasm and and all that. So so Ken and I it was a long journey I think in that specific strand. Obviously Monica as part of that team as well. Sure. Um, you know also a lot of shared experiences. Um, you know, Monica also great passion for the event, uh, real uh, real commitment to doing things the right way, maintaining the right relationships, yeah. um, keeping things consistent, um, and and you know that was a team that has been a team. Obviously, sure. Precious is there, and yeah. and, and Graham's and Graham, and Graham, Graham and Zane well, and... don't get me started with Graham. And, <laughs> you know, so all that. But I think um, you know, with Monica, uh, even to this day, we. We know what each of us is trying to accomplish, and, and yeah. it's a great support. And, and as I say with Ken, that, that, that's that been a special relationship. Yeah. I'll us. never forget when I first started here at Gold Circle, Ken asked me to write an article, and he sent it back uh, six times for correction. <laughs> Eventually I said to him, Ken, well, you know, don't you rather want to write the article? But I was so young and still learning. Yeah. And uh, that's just Ken, you know, to the, to the, to the T that's crossed and the, and the dot that needs to be dotted. And he said to me, if you're going to do it, do it properly. Don't, mm. you know, it's such a massive event. And Monica too, if you can't do it properly, we'll find somebody else. Because yeah. it needs to be done properly. It's a non-negotiable. Yeah. And that was a memory that will yeah. always stick in Warren, my mind. If I may just add to what mm. Chris said uh, earlier about how the event has grown. My first hands-on experience at the Durban July was in 96 when I slid at Sommerfeld. Yeah. Myself, Rolf Smart, Chris Supersed and our team, we parked cars. Ralph. Yeah. Sure. You remember Ralph? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We yeah, Ralph, that yeah. was our function. The Sunfall team came down and parked cars. There was no Jeez. security. I saw security and, you know, you were professionals. There. We were the professionals. Jeez, that's <laughs> wow. interesting. Hey? We wow, parked that's... the cars when the gates closed, came across uh, and got involved in the, well, not involved, but yeah, we but came and enjoyed the day, the day. Of, as, as patrons. Jeez, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, think, yeah, absolutely. I think just, and just to kind of, the, the, you talked about the uniqueness of the July. And um, as a guy who's done events all over the place and a lot of different types of events, uh, one of the most amazing aspects of the July is the organic nature of the event itself. In terms of the staff, 
and the stakeholders, not just the sponsors, not just the racing guys, but you gotta remember on July day, for instance, there's 10, 15 different promoters out there that are also have their yeah. own sure. their own ecosystem um, and, and, um, and, and their own plan for integrating into the event. And that's why you get consistently 40,000 people coming down here. You get all walks of life coming down here because it, that's, that's what's created that transformation and that survival over 24 years. Yeah. Um, where it's transformed from that sort of grassroots community thing, but it's maintained that, but it's just traded up at a different level. And, and, and I think we as an organizational team, and certainly in my role, you know, I really value that. So every, going back to it earlier, every team that's involved, every agency, every stakeholder, every promoter has their own piece of equity here. It's not worth throwing an event in there, plugging in. They're actually helping build yeah. and develop yeah. and, and maintain the success of, of that race day in particular. And, and it's, you know, it's great to have a, a partner in Hollywood Bets that recognizes that, that's brought that energy back into the, into the event. Yeah. And I think that's what has made it probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, one day event in South Africa. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a July fever. <laughs> that's what it's called. It's called July fever. I was at the barber the other day and don't laugh. I did go to the barber. <laughs> I need to go and have a shave up. <laughs> and he said to me, he said, uh, you must be getting excited. And I thought, well, what's he talking about? You know, yeah. he said, this is July fever. I said, oh, yes, because of course we do get excited, but there's race meetings it's before that we've got to work at and, and, and be prepared for. So it does hit the world really you get people coming in from all over the world flying in with helicopters and it's just as chris says all walks of life um have any of you competed and or won the 13th race no thank you <laughs> no, no no go for you no 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 no, no, no go but no. over the years you must have seen some some fun oh, yeah. and, and laughter and uh, you know, that's by that time everyone's had a good few castle lagers and and yeah that's it's, it's also a tradition yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's sadly it's faded away since COVID. Uh, some p parties will say sadly, some we're quite uh, happy it's faded away. <laughs> but I think last year we saw, I think there were a measly three or four three or brave four. souls. Three or four brave souls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just before we wrap up and be in the home straight now, and, and I just want to touch base with these two gents, of, you know, just to, uh, not about racing and not about their jobs. Um, and I'll start with you, uh, uh, um, Kurt. Are oh, you a family man? Tell us about your family. Yeah, Warren. Um, started a bit later in life than the, the, the Joe average. Um, only got married sort of when I was 38, I think. I can't even remember. Yeah, 37. Um, married to a wonderful lady named Shelley. And we have two beautiful uh, children. Sophie is our oldest. She's 14. And our youngest is Sven. And he turns 11 now in August. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, right. So, yeah, very, very, very close family. And try and do as much... Uh, together as possible. Yeah. Um, time flies. Time yeah. flies. Especially with so kids. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, yeah. it does. Hobbies. And beside, do you have any yeah. other hobbies that you? Yeah. Um, I quite enjoy my, my shooting. Okay. That's one of my uh, shooting, uh, sports shooting, and and probably not too popular with a lot of people, but I also hunt. Okay. Well, yeah. each to their own. Absolutely. Yeah. Each each person to their own. But uh, last question to before I, I wish you well for the big day. Uh, your favorite meal and and your favorite beverage of choice. Uh, Warren, I'm a beer man. Okay. Uh, I generally go to beer, and, but if I had to step it up, um, I do enjoy a good Tullamore Dew 12 year old on us. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Meal, I'm not actually fussy. That, um, probably my mom's homemade mac and cheese with a crispy topping. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> mom's homemade mac and cheese with a crispy topping. There we go. Now, Chris, uh, same set of questions to you. Are you a family man? I'm not actually, I've traveled for, I've been away, I'm from the US originally, uh, left when I was 22, came to Africa, uh, been in Africa, the Middle East for uh, the rest of that time and, and really I'm passionate about my career, I'm passionate about travel, I'm passionate about all sorts of things, so uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm been, a lone wolf. Yeah, it would have been hard, uh, <laughs> it's, it's probably... Yeah, I moved around a lot, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of movement, yeah. so uh, not great for relationships, yeah, yeah. but uh, or for a... Uh, which I admire, and as I get older, I'm like, did I make the right choice? But anyway, that's a different podcast. Yeah. But yeah, no. So I'm a, I'm a free agent. Free agent. Uh, you know, obviously, I've got close. My sisters, my my sure. my parents, my friends, and I've got friends in all over the place, as you can imagine. Yes. So uh, so yeah, so that that keeps me. That's my network. So food and drink, uh, your favorite meal. What's uh, your uh, drink of choice? Well, I'll, I'll stick close to my roots. I mean, I. Uh, Look, I enjoy a great steak, 
uh, I enjoy a, a seafood uh, platter. Um, I think many years in Cape Town, you end up a wine guy. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. So I'm definitely a, a, a wine guy. And then going back, stretching back to my roots in America, I'll, I'd love a, I love a great bourbon uh, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm moving on after dinner. So I would say fine wine, uh, uh, good bourbon, uh, and, a, and a nice posh meal. I'm, I'm a happy man. Do you have time for a hobby or, or do, you, do you watch any other sports? Or, you know? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm a super passionate American football uh, okay. fan. I grew up playing it. I'm season ticket holder for my hometown team. So I'm an NFL guy. That's my focus. Uh, obviously, living in, the, in South Africa, you keep an eye on the rugby and the cricket. But I think my passion is week in and week out for six months in the, in the autumn, American autumn, I'm, I'm a football guy. Uh, travel's my big passion. Um, you know, I, when I, if I do have free time... Uh, I love to move around Africa. I've driven all over Africa into the sure. Congo, up the East wow. Coast. Uh, I work a lot with um, uh, some friends who are into, you know, photographers. Uh, uh, I'm heavily into to art. I collect African art okay. um, from all those countries. So, yeah, I'm, I'm into culture. I'm into travel. I love exploration. And, uh, sure. and that keeps me busy when I'm not doing this, which it actually Takes juggling some, different markets yeah. and a constant calendar yeah, of events. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have a lot of uh, a downtime. Last question. Uh, the July comes, it goes. The Hollywood Beds Durban July comes and goes. We're now moving to August. We may yeah. move into September. When does the switch come on again to think about the next year? When, well, when? I mean, it, it doesn't, it, quite frankly, it doesn't stop. Okay. We, uh, we do event reporting during August and September. Uh, all those wonderful pictures we get from, the, from Candace and all the other photographers and videographers and everything goes into reports with the media figures and the, uh, all the demographics, all that. That gets compiled into reports. So we spent August and September with our many sponsors and stakeholders doing reporting, doing post-event analysis. Take a little bit of a breath in uh, of September. Most big corporate brands begin their budgeting process for the, fo for the following year in October and November. So we have to get our proposals sure. out, get our packages in front of them, look at renewals. We got a lot of renewals coming up for next year. Try and get in to see people and get on their radar and get in their brains before the, uh, before the December holidays. And then next thing you know, you come back, it's mid-July. <laughs> you're launching the theme. Yeah. You're, you're now doing media uh, designs. We, we, we sit and design the theme every year and, uh, October and November to get that signed off before the holidays, so we can get into production and design and all that. So, it's not a, it's not, it's a, it's a full uh, twelve-month calendar. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, that's interesting. So we're glad, and I hope that we've just given you some light as, as to what goes on behind the scenes and in, in organizing this event. And I just asked these two gents for thirty seconds. I just want to talk about a few other things, and then we're going to close up and wrap up. Uh, it is, it's a big event and uh, the other day somebody popped in and saw me at the races up at Hollywood Red Scottsville the first time they came to the races and they said, well lovely, you just see everything happens, the horses just arrive and things happen. It does seem that way and as Chris said earlier on, you want it to seem that way but wah, a lot goes on, it's not that easy, a lot goes on behind the scenes to make the racing experience enjoyable. Lots happening, ladies and gentlemen, this week. There is uh, Hollywood Bets Durban July functions, there's various panel discussions. Uh, there is uh, functions, there's media lunches, uh, the gallops have come and gone. All I urge you to do, there's a horse sale coming up, the KZN, uh, a yearling sale. That's taking place at Sun Coast on the Thursday before the uh, Hollywood Bets Durban July. There's the Hollywood Bets Durban July panel discussion Thursday night. Lots of action. I can't go through it all. What I suggest is you go onto the Gold Circle Facebook page and the Gold Circle Instagram page and that'll all be there uh, documented for you. And Drop us a, a DM. And, and whatever you need to know, we'll help you. But get involved in this, the great social calendar in the lead up to the big one. To the whole team, it's a lot of people that do a lot of hard work and we certainly appreciate each and every one of them. But to you gentlemen, um, it's your podcast. The spotlight is on you. And thanks for explaining to us that, you know, what you guys do. And we could have sat here for three hours, but uh, we just haven't got that in the schedule. But uh, Kurt, I'll close off with you, know, with you and then I'll go to, to Chris and just say thank you and, and lovely and all the best for the big day. And, Thanks, Warren. Yeah, and, and enjoy an ice cold beer once the event is over. Yeah, that'll be on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday. Yeah. Chris, to you and, and your team and, and, and everybody and, and for all the hard work and the blood, sweat and tears. As I said, it's, it's a whole team effort and we appreciate the whole team, but it's your podcast. 
Thank you, and, and yeah, all the best for the big day. Thanks, really appreciate it. I want to wish uh, best of luck to all the racing uh, uh, people who have runners on the day, involved with runners. Sometimes people think we lose track of that as the commercial guys and the flash and dash yeah. and whatever. We don't. Yeah, uh, so we know it's at the, at the heart of it. It's, it's, it's all about that racing product, and I know that's a big part of your audience. So yeah. we appreciate them. We appreciate what they do and making opening up their world and their venue for one day a year for us to come and layer everything else on it. So thanks for the time, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to being with all of you guys yeah. and uh, seeing you at the races. Yeah. That's it. We're recording, as I said. This is the two Thursdays before. We are Thursday. What is the date today? Thursday... 28th. 28th. 27th. 27th, 28th. The two Thursdays out from it's the Hollywood Bets Durban July. What, what, what <laughs> date is it? It's Friday. Is it Friday? You see, <laughs> there, there's so much going on, we even get our days mixed up. We normally record on a Thursday. He got a fright. He thought he'd, we'd have to work another day before the weekend. Friday, that's what it is. We're two Fridays out from uh, the Hollywood Bets Durban July. We're close. Next week, we'll have another podcast in the box seat and uh, we'll uh, keep that guest uh, as a surprise. And uh, yeah, just punt well, be safe. And, and when you come to the event, always remember your, your personal safety, your personal space, respect one another, and just enjoy a fabulous day's racing. From myself, Warren and Ferner, uh, and Chris and, uh, and Kurt, all the very best to the team behind the scenes. Thank you. Race well, punt well, and we will see you as always in the number one box. Remember to subscribe, like, and follow us on the Gallup TV YouTube channel. If you missed last week's episode of In the Box Seat, click right here and you'll be able to watch it at your leisure.